La Pantea de Niegas, also known as the Velvet Queen, is directed by Marie Amiguet and Vincent Munier. The film is regarded as a documentary film that conveys the journey of the writer Sylvian Tesson and the photographer Vincent Munier in their pursuit of the notoriously shy snow leopard. The writer's dream and the photographer's rendezvous of meeting this enchanting beast is the goal of the film. The video essay will analyze the tools used inside the Velvet Queen seen throughout the ages within the documentary genre. Nanook of the North by Robert Flaherty, George Franju, Blood of the Beast, Chica Vertov, The Man with the Moving Camera, Louis Buñuel's La Hache de Or, and Nightmare by W. H. Auden are all films that have influenced the tools and techniques seen in the Velvet Queen. These tools merge to convey man's lost connection to Earth, to nature, and wildlife. This is not just your average wildlife documentary, this is The Velvet Queen. The opening of the film, all through the credits, is a long shot video of wolves attacking a herd of yaks. It can be severely gruesome witnessing such a spectacle. Yet it brings focus on the uncivilized part of the world that the photographer and writer are placed in and experience. The land is grim and there is no mercy of any kind. The land is dealt with lack of fertility, growth and civilization. Two men, one with a camera, one with a pen. Major questions within this film will be is if there are any dialogue already scripted, are scenes staged to some extent between the writer and photographer, and is there a deeper message that the film is conveying to the viewer, all of which affect the reality of the film. The first film that I will be comparing with Velvet Queen is Nanook of the North, directed by Robert Flaherty in 1922. The film has been praised as the first documentary, yet it has been criticized for its lack of realness and actuality, not documenting real events, as it borders on fictional narrative film. An example would be the scene of hunters hunting the sea lions with spears. Robert Flaherty had staged the scene for the hunters to use spears instead of rifles, which would have been an easier task. Both Nanook of the North and Velvet Queen have the land as a key feature for the films. The far-off land unknown to civilization is key to both films, and should be noted how the Velvet Queen uses concepts seen throughout the history of documentary as stated in Tom Gunning's essay. In this respect, the view clearly forms part of what I've called the cinema of attractions. The emphasis found in early cinema upon the act of display and the satisfying of visual curiosity. As an actuality, a view makes a greater claim to recording an event of natural or social history. While attractions include artificially arranged scenes enacted precisely to arouse a spectator's curiosity. This matches to some extent how we perceive this foreign landscape and its inhabitants as an attraction. Moreover, it is a clear pattern seen within the documentary genre that Robert Flaherty had established. The images displayed in front of the viewer of what this place is capable of in beauty and brutality, and how it is part of Tibet that has stayed untouched by humanity's corruption and civilization. This film, though, steers clear of what once was as seen in Nanook, but is about the present and how, in this exact moment, they are in their quest to photograph and witness the snow leopard. They are not documenting of what once was, but the present in the hills of Tibet. Two men, one with a camera. The image speaks for itself within the first ten minutes, very much so as Nanook. The protagonists are the writer and the photographer. The film explores their journey towards witnessing the snow leopard. Yet unlike the more experimental films, there is a clear storyline and a narrative created within Velvet Queen. Yet it vitalizes the experimental and poetic aspect seen through film history to make this film more than just a wildlife documentary. The camera of the photographer is always present, and even when not present, the sound of the camera clicking, capturing the photos, adds an air of nostalgia and displays Munier in his occupation, capturing images. He is faced with challenges to accomplish capturing the right photo. We are shown the camera similarly seen in The Man with the Moving Camera by Chika Vertov, 
and the difficulties of capturing some of the footage that is necessary for the film. Although it is a film about filmmaking and the filmmaker, it is also important to note that Munir being part as co-director within the documentary, he is deliberately taking part of both stories, the filmmaker and simultaneously as the photographer. Just as in Man with the Moving Camera, the Velvet Queen on the other hand uses still images of the photographer instead of a cameraman who is capturing a film. You see the process of how Chica Vertov captures the aura and element of his film by showing the audience the cameraman, which can be similarly seen in Velvet Queen, the process of Munier as a photographer, which he explains to be the technique of the blind. Photography and film both use a lens to capture images unable with a human eye. To further strengthen my argument are the images of the Tibetan antelope, the Tibetan fox, goats, mice, and birds. These images are brought up close with a special lens, and the goal of the photograph is brought forth by the beauty of these animals that is difficult for the public to see in their day-to-day -day lives. The images captured of yak, deer, bear, and finally a snow leopard are tremendous, yet there is an art of capturing these photos, and that art is a technique called the blind. But the goal, of course, being the snow leopard, the blind is a key part of the film as it describes the process of Munir being able to capture some of these images he has shown. Furthermore, through his technique to capture the animals, he immortalizes and preserves these animals within the photo and film that might become extinct due to civilization and population in the near forsaken future. I ask myself, what is the photographer's objective? What does he want to capture with the lens and immortalize? How do the photographs speak further? A major influence on the film are how the image and scenes are up close and personal within the film. An image not seen by the public before is Munier's objective when it comes to his path of achieving the image. This, moreover, is with the help of the camera that Munier is able to capture these images, and what enhances the film is the fact that our eyes will never see such beauty without the help of a filmmaker and his camera. To end on this point within Tom Gunning's article, I believe this contributes to the Velvet Queen, as it is the reason Munier desires to capture the images and the viewers desire to see the images. Within the fascinating subterfuge and revelations of the look, one is always aware, and I believe this to be true, of all the early actuality films I am describing here, of a drama staged between camera and subject, the observer and the observed, and ultimately the view and the audience. These views represent a sort of primal exchange and encounter contained in the act of looking, with all its possible scenarios of dominance, curiosity, seduction, objectification, and even identification. The Velvet Queen isn't merely factual, and not so much to say an explanatory piece of documentary, usually seen within wildlife documentaries. The directors are using a poetic mode seen throughout the experimental or avant-garde scene in documentary films, as stated in Nichols. The Velvet Queen transfers the poetic means of the film through the animals that the photographer captures, but also the filming that is captured. The writer, on the other hand, describes his experiences and compares them to his inner conflicts. Hearing the thoughts of the writer adds mysticism towards the film and makes it perhaps more spiritual than factual in the end. C'était des totems, envoyés par de la lésage. Ils étaient lourds, puissants, silencieux, immobiles, si peu modernes. C'étaient les vaisseaux du temps arrêtés. La préhistoire pleurait, et chacune de ces larmes était un yak. This could be expressed equally as seen in Nightmare by Humphrey Jennings. The audience has revealed the animals that the photographer captures with the camera, but what enhances the experience of the audience are the writer's experiences. The manner the animals affect the writer. 
which creates a broader meaning to the image itself within the film. To clearly state the poetic mode which is created are the words spoken by the writer and the images captured by the photographer. Combining both image with words is something that has been seen in documentary. The writer's words describing the yacht clearly showcase the poetic side of the film, comparing the beast as modern, almost describing as an immortal engine. Yet to emphasize the importance of the animal within the film to convey the inner person has been used. For example, Luis Buñuel's El Age de Or, where the use of scorpions is used to describe people, and through this progression, the use of animals to enhance the film is imprinted within documentary to portray people and their actions. To further emphasize my point, the colliding horns of deers, which is a shot seen time and time again in wildlife documentaries. Yet within The Velvet Queen, the film becomes more than just deers colliding. It is a collision that the photographer has within himself and how he deals with coming back to civilization and the deer's clashing has a strong meaning behind them. This can be similarly addressed before in films, such as The Blood of Beasts by George Fraju. The film can be interpreted as the daily life of man slaughtering cows and sheep, but it brings up bigger issues to the table. There is a deeper meaning to the film. It could be the conflict within the director of coping with the atrocities that had happened all over Europe, such as the Second World War and the Holocaust. Instead of making a feature film with a narrative, costume, sets to a film, his choice of using the slaughterhouse to depict the Holocaust or what have shaped documentaries to the core with such images. Yet because cinema has evolved, Munier brings dialogue to his film, and his difficulties merge with the clashing of the deers to convey his troubles. The photographer decides to portray the beauty within our world and within Tibet, and not the ugliness as seen in Blood of the Beasts. Yet both films depict a deeper meaning. No, mais c'est sûr que les retours sont parfois un peu compliqués. Mais je le sais, hein, c'est ça fait plus de 20 ans. C'est moi, c'est vraiment des respirations d'aller dans des endroits comme ça. C'est un peu une fuite finalement. Tu vas dans une nature où. Euh qui n'a pas été bouleversé, qui n'a pas été, tu vois, euh, où, où l'homme n'a encore pas vraiment mis une grosse, sa, sa grosse griffe dessus, quoi. Autour de ma maison, c'est hallucinant l'espace de 20 ans, comme on n'a aucunement respecté le vivant, quoi. Mais ne, ne serait-ce qu'un bel arbre, un beau chêne qui trône en tout d'un champ, les haies, et j'ai pu voir que tout s'est détérioré, quoi. Et ça, c'est ça. C'est assez viscéral, c'est assez étrange, hein. Quand tu as grandi dans ce milieu-là, c'est tout gamin. T'as fait des affûts, t'as passé des temps, enfin des émotions fortes. Ça, ça m'a construit. Et quand tu vois que ce, ce, ce monde-là part en, part comment dire, en, 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 en vrille, c'est pas en vrille, comment tu dis, part en, 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 en décrépitude. En décrépitude. Hein. Et ben ça, c'est, euh, c'est intérieur, ça te fait super mal. Hein. Et donc j'ai besoin, Kamchatka, le Grand Nord, là où il n'y a quasiment plus de présence humaine, ou alors des nomades, comme ici, qui vivent en harmonie finalement. C'est vraiment le mot que l'on n'a plus. Finally, the snow leopard. It is the pinnacle of what mankind needs to preserve. It is an entity or that final goal that mankind needs to find to be able to connect to nature. The photographers and writers journey within themselves to find the leopard is what brings them a step closer in connecting with the land and within themselves. There is a clear depiction of how this documentary is not only showing us the present, but it is capturing the photographer and writer's conquest of capturing the snow leopard, but also depicting man's disconnection to nature. Similarly, Blood of the Beasts places the same circumstance as the slaughtering of the animals in the slaughterhouse is more than just that. It is a reference to atrocities committed in the Holocaust. One more gruesome than the latter, it used similar techniques. All previous films compared to The Velvet Queen showcase how documentaries have evolved and how The Velvet Queen uses various techniques from cinema to convey a much deeper and stronger message within its film.